Thank you very much, John and Klaus. Special thanks for your invitation. I'm honored uh, to be part of distinguished uh, faculty and like uh, to use this faculty for a little bit of brainstorming in a topic which is pretty rare, but nevertheless very interesting. Uh, we all know the different entities of uh, impingement, of femoral neck fractures and of avascular necrosis. When we start with femoral neck fractures, we have stress fractures due to fatigue or in insufficiency uh, fractures. We can have traumatic fractures. We all know the different entities of impingement and, of course, avascular necrosis, which can be post-traumatic and idiopathic. There are some very easy, understandable pathways between these three disorders. For example, the traumatic uh, hip uh, femoral neck fracture, which is, in spite of uh, reduction, leading or can lead to post-traumatic avascular necrosis. This is very clear. More recently, we have also an association between uh, impingement uh, deformities and uh, stress fractures of the femoral neck. Uh, I will show you one example, just uh, which is from my point of view very typical. This is a 17-year-old female with a, you see it here, with an incomplete stress fracture. Uh, she has pain since four weeks, is doing some leisure running, but otherwise healthy. No female athletic triad, absolutely normal bone turnover. And when you take a closer look, you have a certain type of acetabular retroversion, you have a clearly decreased femoral anteversion, and you have a mild uh, cam deformity here. And when you take all together, together with also the labral degeneration here, it's probably, uh, or it might be a reason for these uh, stress fractures. So we undertook a valgization osteotomy together with uh, derotation, and as we did not end up in sufficient internal rotation, we, in a second procedure, added a reverse periacetabular osteotomy, and you see a nice uh, anatomic situation three years after the procedure, and she is running again, and absolutely symptom-free. There is a lot. This is a busy slide. I do apologize for that, but it's summarizing the current data on the association between impingement and stress fracture. Um, a number of different uh, publications ranging from one case to 200 cases. We have now just submitted six cases and we are now starting to focus a little bit more on the therapy of this issue because most of these articles do not deal at all with the uh, concomitant issue of deformity and stress fractures. They just put a screw in the neck and then it's good. Uh, and they do not really discuss what are appropriate treatment approaches to the deformity. Let's change to the association between impingement and avascular necrosis. There um, is uh, probably, I'm sure, several of you have cases like that. This is a young boy, 32 uh, years of age, with a clear uh, cam deformity, a clear uh, and typical necrosis pattern. He has pain and he is currently thinking if he should follow the advice of a combination of core decompression and um, correction of the deformity. The first, to my knowledge, who has described the association between uh, uh, impingement and avascular necrosis is uh, Christian Freitschel. He uh, reviewed a group of 77 patients with avascular necrosis and found an incidence of 83 patients with high alpha angle, while in a control group, the uh, incidence of uh, uh, elevated alpha angle was significantly lower. Another group from Germany, from Stefan Landgraber, focused on the treatment approach and they said they also found a high incidence of uh, CAM deformities in their uh, necrosis group and they said when you do not uh, approach the deformity, you will have a worse survival than when you do uh, uh, approach the deformity together with a correction of the CAM. There are several explanations from a theological point of view. Nötzli did a study where he said maybe the forced external rotation, which is decreasing the blood flow, can play a role. Other groups has also looked on the blood flow, like this uh, Chinese group, where they could also see a r significant reduction in extreme uh, positions. So the theory that the retinacular vessels are compromised is one theory to explain that. Many authors do ignore that there are a lot of historic publications already in the 80s and 90s. Uh, these are some examples, and this is just one of them, where they did an experiment in dogs, where they looked that with extreme flexion or rotation, you can increase the pressure in the femoral head and you decrease your blood flow. 
So pro probably two uh, etiologies are coming together in this uh, association between impingement and, uh, and uh, necrosis. The, the influence of range of motion and loading pattern can of obviously also trigger avascular necrosis. The interesting question now is, is there also an association between avascular necrosis and uh, stress fracture of the femoral neck? I will present you three cases just briefly to run through them to highlight this. This is a 58-year-old male who first uh, brought my attention to this issue. He has a pretty normal acetabular shade, a little bit on the other side of uh, upper side of coverage, a little bit of chem in the MRI at 66 degrees, and he has a history of pain th since three years. He has been drilled in an external department three years ago with the diagnosis of avascular necrosis. You can still see the drill holes here, and he has, after three years, still a pattern of partial necrosis here, of edema, and, in addition, he has these stress fractures here. So three years after initial treatment, he has still a persisting problem. And when you look at his anatomy further, you see a significant external rotation of the, uh, of the femora, of, uh, 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 decreased uh, femoral uh, antitorsion, about minus 10 degrees. And we thought it would be good to do a combination of a rotation osteotomy, a chem resection, and uh, screw fixation. Uh, it healed perfectly, everything was okay. The only problem is one year after the procedure, the pa patient has still the same pain than before. And even when we uh, remove the hardware metal, he has still the necrosis, he has still the fractured type of pattern, and we have no real improvement. The next case uh, is a 50-year-old male. He has also a pretty normal acetabular coverage, an alpha angle of 72 degrees. You see the necrosis here with the stress fracture, and he has an increased alpha angle. Uh, he has a little bit of smoking, five cigarettes per day, but no alcohol. Uh, we did just a hip screw, and uh, as he persisted with problems, we did a cam resection in a second procedure half a year afterwards. But again, this, ca this case has no improvement at all. The third case, um, which is a classical case, uh, 45 years of age, hip pain on the right more than on the left side, he is using steroids due to rheumatoid arthritis. He's a smoker, heavy smoker. He's drinking alcohol without limits. And he has a classical situation. Uh, he has the, the fractures. He has the incipient uh, avascular necrosis. And he has a overcoverage here on the acetabulum together with the elevated alpha angle. Um, we were uncertain what to do. He refused a larger treatment and we just fixed the situation as it is, and now three years post-operatively, he's absolutely pain-free, has no problems at all, and he's uh, satisfied with the procedure. So a little bit irritating for me. When we now think, when we now think over this uh, triad, of this uh, challenging triad, um, we have atypical fracture patterns in our patients. They are not clearly at the femoral neck, they are more intracervical. We have in our patients cofactors for the necrosis. It's not ju just pure necrosis, uh, it, it, a little bit of smoking, a little bit of other things. And of course, we cannot say if the uh, impingement plays any causal role here. It could be that the impingement is triggering AVN, as I have shown you. And it could be that AVN is also leading to femoral neck fractures due to weakening of the bone. It also could be that the impingement is leading to a femoral neck stress fracture, as I have shown you. And the stress fracture caused secondary avascular necrosis. We have a lot of uh, evidence that different parts of, uh, of cutting of the femoral neck of the su blood supply can lead to distinct entities of, uh, of uh, blood, uh, blood supply diminishing in the head. So both could be. It could also be that there is no causal relationship at all. I do not know. So I just wanted to share this thing as a kind of brainstorming with you. It's not a really scientific presentation. It's some kind of food, of food for thought for our discussion. And I think we should search when we have cases with combined avascular necrosis and, um, and impingement. We should look a little bit more if they have mild signs of concomitant fractures. We need more cases, maybe you have some cases when uh, we can put them together to better understand the pathology. The main question at the end for me is, at the moment, although there is no clear recommendation in the literature, we would tend, if we have a combination of stress fracture with impingement, 
we would tend to fix the stress fracture and to treat the deformity. But I'm not really sure what to do if we have an additional avascular necrosis because two out of our three patients did not uh, went well, although we tried to do everything we could. Thank you very much for your attention.